wake up, new OBS experiment just dropped. That's right, I'm pretty much the Disney or Pixar of live streaming. They were like, what if animals have feelings? What if children had feelings? What if, and I'm like, hey, you can use OBS Studio to record, to live stream, to do motion design, to do live video effects. But there's one more thing that content creators need and that's graphic design. Today, we're gonna answer the question, could you possibly do graphic design using OBS Studio? Spoiler, the answer is yes. This is not gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial because in my motion design video, I explain every single step you can take, but I'll do my best to make sure you're not lost. Quick message from our sponsor and then we can begin. And today's sponsor is Owned Pro. Owned is already known for having the biggest overlay and alerts pack on the internet. But using your free Owned Pro account, you can install them with one click. You also get access to a Twitch chatbot, a customizable dashboard, a huge library of alerts, you have gold bars, you have countdown feature, there's a link spree, a donation page, you can check your stats, I already mentioned a gazillion overlays, royalty free music, and pretty cool Twitch extensions. This one gives you animated panels. This one will show up alerts even if you're streaming from console. And this one lets you trigger alerts that will show up on your whole screen. So go check it out over at own.gg slash level pro. That is O-W-N-3-D.gg slash level pro. Boom, here we are in OBS Studio. And basically the idea of creating graphic design is as simple as can I export PNG images. Now, we all know that you can take screenshot of specific sources, specific scenes and all that, so nothing new. But can you export transparent PNG images? Is that a thing? Because if the answer to that is yes, then yeah, OBS Studio is also a graphic design software. Congratulations. So I found this page where this person is explaining how to export with Alpha Channel in OBS Studio. Alpha Channel, basically transparency, if you will. And from what I can see, it's basically going to try to export a PNG image sequence. If you're into like motion design, you probably know what that is. But the container format here is .mov. So we're going to play around with it and see if we can actually get a PNG sequence, but without compiling it. So without having a video format at the end, just all the PNG images. So first we need to go to the settings and set the color format to RGB. I think I'm gonna create a new profile for this one because I don't wanna ruin my OBS. Just call it PNG, okay? Go to settings, let's go to advanced and now the color format, I don't see RGB, okay. We're off to a great start. I'm gonna try BGRA, 8-bit and immediately get a very red message. Okay, now let's go to output. We're gonna set the output mode to advanced, go to recording and then under type we want Custom Output, FFmpeg. Container Format, we're gonna have a bunch of choice. We're gonna select MOV. And then under Video Encoder, we're gonna go and select PNG. All right, make sure you know where the file is going to be. See Users Get Level Videos. Click Apply. And now we just need to find something that we can exploit. Now, on one of my previous videos, I showed you how to create some sort of pop-up, even though I com completely came in and butchered it. Let me try to fix it. And basically all of this right there, the background should be completely transparent. So I'm gonna click Start Recording and I'm gonna pray that everything goes well. Okay, so we can see bottom left that it did record a .mov, but let's go check it out. Okay, so what I did is I imported that file that we just created, that .mov file, into Adobe Premiere just to check its transparency, and uh, it is in fact transparent, as you can see. Yeah, I put it against an orange background. There you have it. It's not great quality. We can probably play around with that a little bit, but I set out to export a PNG with a transparent background, and we figured out how to export a whole video with a transparent background. You can probably convert this to a WebM video, which means that using things like the Move Transition tool, you can probably, not probably, you can totally create like stinger transitions directly using OBS. Like that is wild. So that was one of the pop-ups we created. And yeah, you can record this and have it on a transparent background and share it. Okay, now to figure out how do I get this into PNG. I would probably have to split, do it in post, but uh, if we're just operating with OBS Studio, we're gonna assume that you don't have any fancy software. So with the power of Google, I found Online Free Converter and there is an MOV to PNG. We just need to see if uh, that's gonna work. Since our file is pretty light, 854 kilobytes, we'll see if that works. Now the question is, are we gonna have a sequence, multiple files, or just one single PNG from the first frame? Let's figure it out. Oh, but it's one single file. Let's see it. Okay, let's put it here, download it, and let's open it. There we go. <laughs> just like that, we have our PNG file. Again, the quality is not the best. You would probably have to play around with the encoder or maybe the size of your design, but we can see that it is totally possible. So if you wanna create, <laughs> So if you wanna create, I don't know, like YouTube banners, Twitch panels, profile pictures, anything, you could use OBS to do it. 
directly. Okay, so now that we know about the possibilities, let's make it happen. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a time lapse of me creating a Twitch panel straight in OBS. If you see any icons, like the Twitch icon, for example, that's gonna come from Google Images, but everything else is probably gonna be straight in OBS. All right, new scene, let's get it pop in. We're gonna be using a lot of color sources. Color source, we can pick the colors. It's pretty cool. Copy and paste duplicates. Hold shift in order to stretch, hold alt in order to crop, but in this case, you're probably not gonna see the difference. There's kind of a weird thing going on when you stretch things. For example, I'm gonna hold shift, stretch it, I'm gonna release shift, and as soon as I touch it, it's gonna reset the stretch. So you might as well use alt to crop, just like that, even though sometimes the filters might not uh, affect it the way you, you would want it to. Remember when I told you that graphic design is just a bunch of rectangles? You're seeing the proof right now. Okay, so far so good. What we can do is actually add some filters or use even um, OBS plugins to make it look even better. If you wanted rounded rectangles, for example, the shader filter plugin would probably help with that. I would click on that rectangle here. I would go to filters. I would add user defined shader, click okay. Click load shader text from file, click browse. And then you would find something that has to do with whatever filter you want. There's even a circle shader, I believe, right there where you can double click and create like uh, some sort of Circle, you can play around with the, the things, but that's not what we're looking for. We want rounded rectangle. Is it that one? Corner radius, there we go. And as we can see, it is not necessarily following the crop. So holding alt is not always the, the best solution. But if you put that layer in a group and then you add the filter to the group, it should work. Let me try it. Right click, click copy. Oh, I should have removed it actually. Let me turn it off. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna right click group selected items. I'm gonna call this one rounded. Just, we're just testing, okay? So with that selected, we're gonna click on filters. We're gonna right click here and paste. We're gonna turn it on. And as you can see, now it's added to all the corners, regardless of our cropping. Pretty cool, right? So with that in mind, let me delete this. I'm actually gonna group up everything. Yes, everything. Put this out of the group, delete that group. And I'm gonna select every single one of them, right click, group selected items, call it all. And now we're gonna add a shader filter to all of them. And basically I'm gonna create some sort of perspective. User defined shader, load shader text from file, click browse, and we want some sort of 3D effect shader. Corner pin shader right there, that's nice. And we're gonna play with the values until we have a skew effect. In DLX I'm gonna put 50, and on TRX I'm gonna put 50. Okay, now we have a whole skewed thingy thing. <laughs> Uh, definitely play around with the colors. Some of them can definitely be uh, a little lighter. Remember that you can also control transparency. I like to use the color correction filter for that. This one comes with OBS, so you don't need any extra anything. And then there's the opacity slider right there, as you can see. So if you wanna have some cool effects with that, you can use it too. Let's actually keep it like that. I don't know how well it's gonna transfer though with, um, with the format that we're using. So no transparency, but you have the option. I actually kinda like that radius. On the left side, the rounded corner, we're gonna keep it. Of course, you can put whatever icon depending on the panel that you're creating. I just have this uh, PNG image here. So we're gonna create a schedule panel. So in OBS, we're gonna click plus, source, image, call this one icon, and go find it. Okay, it's right there. We could have created a rules panel too. Oops, click open, click OK. It's gonna be in that corner. We're gonna drag it, make it bigger, just like that. Again, you can blur it. There's a bunch of effects, there's a bunch of plugins to blur stuff. I believe the shader filter also can blur stuff. Uh, if you like the color black, you can do that. If you don't like it, you can always use a color correction. And then in color add, you can add white. Boom, it's white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's add a little bit of text, plus text. Okay, we can pick the font. There's a font I like, it's called Enter the Grid. Let's make it kind of big, 72. Then we can place it. Since the group right there, the one called all, has uh, an effect on it, if I wanted this to be also skewed, I could just drop it in the group. See that? I'm actually gonna select the color to kind of match by clicking pick screen color. And let's click that bright one, click okay. Okay, not bad. Let's add another text that says schedule. Cool, let's type schedule, full caps. Select enter the grid, nice, huge, cool, and just place it. So again, effects like drop shadows and things like that are all things that you can um, totally achieve in OBS Studio. Do I want it to be in the group? Let's test it. Actually not bad. Do I want it to be under those things? I kind of like it. All right, do more adjustments. I'm holding alt to crop, remember? 
Nice. And since we still have our settings, all we have to do is basically record for about a second and then run it through that online converter. So I'm going to click start recording. Stop as soon as I see one second. It should appear right there. I'm going to click start over and then drag drop. I have to choose the format images PNG convert then download and my panel is ready. Click on it. There it is. Pretty cool. I can even go to Twitch and add it. I'm going to click on chat, scroll down, edit panels. Uh, let's add a new one. Add text or image panel, add image. Then I can drag and drop where the PNG was right there. Boop. I can crop it properly. It's going to look out of place, but all you have to do is change the text and then you have, you can make a bunch of them. Come on, Twitch. There it is. Just like that. Just like that, you can create Twitch panels at least. You can probably, well, you can create anything, anything that has to do with image, your profile picture, you can adjust it in OBS, your YouTube banner, your Twitter banner, everything. And we did it. I'm not going to lie. This is one of those. I had the idea. I did a little bit of research and then I made it happen. So if you have a way to export transparent PNG images straight from OBS, for example, please let me know in the comment section below. I am a professional graphic designer, so this is like, I'm not going to use OBS studio to make graphic design, but if you don't have access to professional tools, but you have access to OBS Studio. I just want to show you that you can make graphic design, motion design, you can record, you can live stream, you can do much, much more. Especially now that you know how to export both transparent images and transparent video, you can also create stinger transitions straight in OBS with the move transition tool. Make things move around, boom, stinger transition. Anyways, this was just an exercise. Again, OBS Studio is not a graphic design software. I just want to boost your creativity. That's it. Make sure you follow me everywhere and I will see you all next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out. <laughs>